Tonight's eighth presenter is a filmmaker, lawyer, and co-founder of Humanology. She has produced and directed numerous short films, earning more than 50 international film festival awards and selections. Please welcome to the stage, Salima Stanley Banji. Could I get you all to be like, on your marks, get set, go, on the count of three, one, two, three. So about a decade ago, I was at the airport waiting for my flight back to Calgary from London. I don't know what airline I was flying, but I know it wasn't WestJet because otherwise I'd still be waiting at the airport for my flight back to Calgary. Yep. So anyway, last minute, I decide I need to change my seat. I get on the flight and I'm seated next to this older man from Okotoks who tells me he's a medium and he can see my aura and it's turquoise but somehow, you know, I, I don't have the lens to see auras, but somehow I just know that my aura is this specific shade of turquoise. Yeah, WestJet turquoise. <laughs> so later, the medium tells me that I have the skill of transfiguration, which sounds kind of Hogwartsy, and I don't really know what that is. And also JK Rowling, stop the tweets. I mean, should we call them exes now? I'm not really sure. So I look up transfiguration and I find out it's just changing the form of something, which is something that we all know how to do. It's like ever made an ice cube or like when a DM has turned into a date. But let's get back on track for a second to before I knew my aura was turquoise. This is me in the middle, circa 1982 in Australia where I grew up. That was the last Christmas uh, that I actually celebrated because after that, I had to stop eating bacon and um, start celebrating Eid. So Australia was home, but I never felt like it was home because people always questioned whether I was Australian by the way I looked. Um, most of the people I knew looked like Macaulay Culkin, and I just felt like Macaulay as Kevin, at home and alone. It wasn't easy being brown and Muslim growing up in Australia in the 80s, honestly. I mean, the Muslim part, not a big deal. It was pre-9-11. You know, no one really knew what Muslim was. But I had to learn about six minutes of Arabic prayer and forget what the taste of bacon was like. Part of our practice was also meditation at 4 a.m. So at about age 12, with my shiny braces, I started meditating early in the morning. And I'd sit in my bedroom alone, focusing my attention and connecting with something that felt bigger than just me. About a month later, I realized my life was different. Everything seemed easier and sweeter, and yet nothing had actually changed except for my lens. It was almost as formative as Kylie Minogue's locomotion, not quite. I'd realized that if we change our own lens, we actually change our own reality. Within a month of graduating high school, I moved to Canada. I'd been a foreigner where I grew up, and now um, I would actually be one. Over the course of the next quarter century, I'd transfigure my own self from role to role and box to box. From immigrant to aerobics instructor, it was the 90s, to backpacker, barefoot runner, heartbroken dumpy, yoga teacher, someone who became a parent, someone who lost a parent. All this was me and somehow none of it was really me. Even my racial identity changed. I went from feeling super brown growing up to being like, where's the melanin? My accent changed from this to this. I also found out I was Japanese. I mean, how do you suddenly turn Japanese? Via Ancestry.com. <laughs> this dashing man was my great-grandfather. My mother always wondered if he'd concealed something about his racial identity. Turns out, three vials of saliva later, that he was half Japanese. After this, I piloted a series of well, I am Japanese type comments that I regularly inserted into conversations. These were not received that well. I'm not sure why, but maybe it's because I'm only 5% Japanese and I barely know how to properly pronounce Pichuki, Pikachu, Pikachu, no, that thing. 
Uh, brown, white, biracial, multiracial, BIPOC, South Asian, Australian, Canadian, Japanese, all of this was me and somehow none of it was me. Surely I had to be something unchanging, who I was had to be sort of immutable. And like any really good story shared by a former yoga teacher, my spiritual epiphany came to me on a mountain in India. Arunachala, the mountain, is referred to as the body of Shiva, who in Hinduism is the god of destruction. If I was to destroy all the identities I'd ever known, forget my story and erase all the turquoise, what would be left? Would I make myself disappear like Kevin made his family disappear? What would be left in the absence of it all? Just the perception of things, just a lens, a consciousness? And while none of this was me, somehow, at the same time, all of it was me. Everything could be included. And wasn't that what I had always wanted, to feel like all parts of me could be included? That I didn't have to be at home alone like Kevin, I could just be home. In 2015, I began to share human stories in short film format. This was shooting one of the first films I worked on in Bangladesh about a rickshaw driver named Saidur. I tell stories to help us see, embrace, and celebrate more of who we are. I tell stories for us to feel a greater sense of home with each other and in ourselves. I tell stories for us to feel less alone and more included and to help shift our perception just a tiny bit so that we can transfigure our destinies. My perception affects my destiny and I believe that our collective perception affects our collective destiny. That was just a pause for emphasis. I know you're surprised I'm taking a breath. I, I am too. A blurry lens can lead us to more separation, hate, and genocide, while bringing things into a little more focus can lead us to more connection, wellness, and understanding. Today, I understand that I'd rather have a pink aura than a turquoise one. I don't practice a faith, but I do meditate sometimes still, and I did bring back the Christmas tree and, of course, bacon. And just like Home Alone Kevin, I would like someone to please tell Santa that instead of presents this year, I just want my human family back. Thank you.